In this video, we will cover multiple VM cluster support and cluster node subsetting capability on X-ray database service on dedicated infrastructure. We will go over the cluster provisioning workflow and adding remove VMs to the cluster and scaling of resource in the context of multi-VM. Let's provision a cluster on a subset of DB servers. First, we'll navigate to the X-ray database service on dedicated infrastructure, also called X-ray database service on public cloud from the home menu. Next, we'll navigate to the specific x data infrastructure on which we want to create the cluster. In this example, the infrastructure has three DP servers and four storage servers. Next, we'll launch the create VM cluster flow from the infrastructure context. By default, all the DP servers part of the infrastructure are selected to be part of the cluster. You can always change the selection by selecting a subset of DB servers to host the VMs for a specific cluster. You need a minimum of two DB servers to create a cluster. Each DB server is listed with resources available and clusters hosted on that server. The max resource available across your selection is called out for convenience. In this example, we have selected DB servers one and two. The maximum OCPU memory and local storage available to allocate is based on the selected DB servers 1 and 2. You can specify the resource allocation by typing into the text field or using the sliders next to it. The total resource allocated across all the VMs is computed and presented as read-only text field for context. Next, you can specify the XA data storage to be allocated for this specific cluster. Next, we'll select the VCN and subnet for the client and backup networks. Once the VM cluster is in provisioning state, you can navigate to the work request section to view the progress of your task. Once the VM cluster has provisioned successfully, you can view the resource allocation on the cluster details page. You can view VMs part of this cluster and the resource allocated per VM by navigating to this section. Each VM in the cluster has the same resource allocation for OCPU memory and local storage. You can easily navigate to the specific DB server hosting the VM from the cluster. In this example, DB server one is hosting the VM from our cluster. Now let's look at how to add a VM to expand the cluster. For this, we'll navigate to the VMs listed under the cluster and launch the add VM workflow. DB servers already hosting a VM from the cluster are not available to add. The newly added VM has the same resource allocation and the guest OS version as the existing VMs in the cluster. While the new VM is being provisioned, the cluster is marked as updating. You can view the progress of the add VM action by navigating the corresponding work request details. Once the work request has completed successfully, you can see the resource allocation updated with the new VM count, OCPU, memory, and local storage 
you will also see the newly added VM listed under the cluster alongside other existing VMs. Next, we look at how to shrink a cluster by removing a VM. For this, we'll navigate to the specific VM we want to remove from the cluster and initiate the terminate VM workflow. Deleting a VM terminates all database instances running on the VM and requires additional confirmation. Once the terminate VM work request has completed successfully, you will see the new VM count and the updated resources allocated across the remaining VMs. The terminated VM is also removed from the list of VMs under the cluster. Next, we look at how to scale VM resources allocated to an existing cluster. You can launch the scale VM cluster action from the cluster details page. The scale cluster flow shows the existing VM count along with the current OCPU memory, local storage, and accelerator storage allocated for the cluster. Just like in the cluster provisioning flow, you can change the resource allocation by typing in a number or using the sliders. The scale VM cluster flow also supports changing the accelerator storage allocated for that cluster. The scale VM cluster action triggers individual work requests for each resource type. In this example, we have scaled the OCPU memory and local storage as part of the scaling operation. As you can see, the OCPU scaling has completed successfully and the values are updated accordingly. We have a separate work request for memory which has completed as well. The overall work request for scaling continues to show progress while the local storage is being updated. Once all the work requests for OCPU memory and local storage has completed, the overall scaling work request is marked complete and the updated resources are reflected. Resource allocation across all the VMs continues to remain the same. Next, we look at infrastructure scaling in the context of multi-VM. Adding a DB server to an infrastructure makes the resource available to all clusters on that infrastructure. In this example, the infrastructure has three DB servers. We will add one more DB server. The total OCPUs before and after adding the DB server is displayed for context. You can add a maximum of four DB servers per scaling request. Once the scale request has completed successfully, you can view the newly added DB server listed as part of the infrastructure. In this example, DB server 4 is the newly added server and is not hosting any VMs at the moment. You can use the newly added DB server as part of new cluster provisioning or to add a VM to an existing provision cluster. In this example, our cluster has three VMs and we'll add a fourth VM on the newly added DB server. As you can see, DB server 4 is available to add and is not hosting any VMs at the moment. Here you can see the newly added VM which is hosted on DB server 4. Under DB server 4, you see the VM which we just added to the cluster. Next, we look at infrastructure scaling with storage servers. 
Scaling the infrastructure with storage server does not add capacity to any specific cluster. It is available for all clusters to use. Here, the infrastructure has four storage servers. We'll be adding one more. Adding a storage server requires a data rebalance across all the existing disk groups and is done as a separate step. You can add a maximum of six storage servers as part of your scale request. Adding the storage capacity from the newly added server is a separate step and gives users more control on when the data rebalance across its existing disk groups happen. The storage server count and the total available capacity is not updated until the add capacity step is completed. Since the add capacity step involves data rebalance across existing disk groups, this may have a performance impact while the rebalance is in progress. Once the add storage capacity work request has completed successfully, the total storage server count and the total available capacity is updated accordingly. This additional capacity from the newly added storage server is available for new cluster provisioning as well as to scale existing clusters with additional capacity. As you can see, the limits for existing cluster has increased. Thanks for joining us today to learn about multi-VM and node subsetting.